Hey everyone, Steve Perry here. So far you've installed Node, learned basic Node concepts, and did a deep dive into the event loop. Now you're ready for your first application. This video accompanies Unit 6 of the Node.js course available from IBM Code. A link to the course is in the video description. Here's what you'll see in this video. I'll show you how to set up the project you'll be working on. I'll take you on a tour of the code, including the code you'll need to modify. And I'll show you how to run the functional tests, which are how you know if your code is working according to the specifications. All of the code for Unit 6 is available in GitHub, and a link to the repo is in the video description. Let's get started. If you haven't already, clone the code from GitHub. A link to the GitHub repo is in the video description. Now navigate to the Unit 6 directory and you'll see these files. As I said in the Unit 6 material, the shopping list Minimally Viable Product, or MVP, requires that you set up a SQLite 3 database, which is super easy. But first, let's verify that you have the correct version of Node and NPM. To make sure that the versions of Node and NPM you have installed are 10 and 6 respectively, enter this command node-v ampersand ampersand npm-v. Your major version of node should be 10, major version of npm should be 6. If not, check out the setup video for unit 2 where I show you three ways to install node. That's a lot of ways. From the command prompt, type npm install. The SQLite 3 module will be installed from the npm registry. Next, run the database load program npm run load-db. This program loads the database with data from the Open Grocery Database project. Next, start Node in development mode by using the npm run start dev script. This starts Node using Nodemon, which you installed in Unit 4. Each time you make a change to the code, Nodemon detects the change and restarts Node automatically, making sure you're always ready to test. Next, start VS Code and open the Unit 6 directory. Expand all of the directories and you'll see a structure like this. The config directory is where the application settings are stored. The REST server front end is defined in server.js. It's responsible for processing two root paths, forward slash items for all item related requests and forward slash lists for all list related requests. The routes are defined in routes.js, which is in the controllers directory. Each HTTP message sent to the REST server is cracked first by length of the path, then by the HTTP method. Once those two things are known, the routes module invokes the path handler for the root path. After verifying the secondary resource is correct, this function delegates to the lists DAO dot find by ID with all items function. Unit 6 is set up to simulate your participation in a real world project. In this project, you'll be finishing the code started by the previous node developer. You'll add code in a few spots where the code is not complete. There are four modules affected by the previous developer's departure itemshandler.js, listshandler.js, itemsdao.js, and listsdao.js. For example, in listshandler.js, in the handle lists find by ID function, you see there is code to delegate to the DAO to get the data. But if you look in listsdao.js module, you'll see the implementation is missing. There are several spots like this throughout the four modules, and they're all marked with to-do comments. Your job is to finish the code so the team can demo the MVP for the customer. So how do you know when it's finished? That's what we'll talk about next. You're fortunate that the company you work for in this simulation practices behavior-driven development, test-driven development, test-first development. Whatever you want to call it, it works something like this. Requirements are captured in the form of use cases or user stories. The user stories are refined and the system's required behaviors are harvested. Tests are written in the target language, JavaScript in this case, to ensure the system provides those required behaviors. Then a cycle begins. Run the tests, and if they fail, write code to implement the required system behavior. And when all the tests pass, you're done. The test lead has written a functional test suite for all of the user stories in the shopping list MVP application. Your job is to get all the functional tests to pass. 
So how do you run the functional tests? First, make sure the application is running in development mode using NodeMon. Then, in a separate terminal window, navigate to the Unit 6 directory and run npm test. If you see output like this, you have some work to do, my friend. Let's check out the functional test suite. In the test directory, open functionaltest.js. There are 10 user stories in the MVP, as I cover in detail in the Unit 6 material. The way the tests are written, the next test won't be run until the previous test passes. So go into the code and write the implementation for these in the order they appear in functionaltests.js. Each time you write the implementation, run the functional test suite. When one test passes, move to the next one. And continue this until all of the tests pass. Once all of the functional tests pass, you're done. Now, if you get stuck, there is a solution available. In the controllers and models directories, there is a subdirectory called solution that contains the solution code. Use this as a last resort and only if you get stuck, but follow the instructions in the to-do comments and you should be fine. I believe in you, champ. I believe in you. And there you have it. A tour of your first Node.js application from Unit 6 of the Node.js course from IBM Code. All of the code examples you see in the video are available in GitHub. And be sure to check out the full course available from IBM Code. A link to the course is in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Steve Perry. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So long.